Okay. Hey, this is Daryl from Barbecue Superstars, and we're here with the one and only Danny Kugel. Uh, before I started Barbecue Superstars, I was in Dillard, Georgia, and I actually seen Danny. Uh, they won the grand champion up there, which it was a huge contest. Myron and a whole bunch of the stars, Tuffy Stone was there. Anytime you log a win over Tuffy Stone, that's really a uh, big time win. And uh, So how you doing, Danny? Well, I can't complain. We're having lots of fun up here in South Carolina. We're in the Gaffney Peach Festival today, and uh, uh, tell us what, what it looks like. I know we've got barbecue here, and we've got a lot of bull barbecue. A lot of bull, you got up and smoke, uh, you got Chatham Artillery. Um, there's a bunch of teams here, you know, top of the line team. This is usually one of those events where the best in the, in the business come together. All right, here's uh, here's Chatham is your, Artillery. Is, is your head big enough? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, I have never met uh, the main man from Chatham Artillery, but he's won a lot of contests, and uh, you know. You know, speaking from my point of view, he won so much that, you know, I'm sure that, you know, as soon as y'all pull up, a lot of them are like, oh, Lord, there's Chad. I'm so, uh, uh, so. And it's double jeopardy when we're together. Yeah. You know, we usually go side by side, so it's, uh. Oh, Lord. Well, well, uh, how you, how you feel about this weekend uh, coming up? This is my first time here, so you really never know what's going to happen. You just gonna cook your regular flavor profile, or anything special? All, all you can do is do your best cook, and then once you turn it in, it's in the judges' hands. Sometimes you hit a good table where you got the good judges, and sometimes you hit a table where you got judges that just started judging and they really don't know what they're looking at or tasting. So you could do, you could get a grand this week, and you could get 30th place next week with the same exact food. Yeah, that that happens. Man, how, how do you remedy that? I mean, you just have to do the best you can and hope for the best. Yeah, you just got to get on the right table. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one trick to it is trying to find that Goldilocks zone. Not too, not too hot, not too spicy, not too this, not too that. You want to appeal to more judges overall than just a select handful of judges. And I call it the Goldilocks zone. Well, uh, uh, Chatham, I just want to get your... Uh, what do you think about this Sam's Chase and all this big money? Uh, you guys excited about that? Yeah, I'll be doing the one in Marietta. He'll be he'll be competing against me there too. Uh, we'll see. Uh, he's already got his his trip planned to Las Vegas. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Trust me on this. He's already got that planned out. He's already called me and said, "Look, look, fly the girls out. We're gonna book a room." I was like, "Let's first win the Marietta one. Then we'll talk about." <laughs> <laughs> the regional, you know. Now, is it going to be a top ten because it's smaller? Is it a top six? You know, it's top six in the in the local, and then it's it's top ten for the regional, or is it top eight? I don't know. To be honest with you, <laughs> it changes all the time. I'm just worried right. about Marietta right now. Yeah, so there's, I think when the when the competition is smaller from a, like a big area, they'll go top ten, and then when it's like a, from a big area, they'll do top six or something like that. But, but anyway, well, uh, well, Danny, what you been up to, man? Tell us about your team. What you been doing, man? Well, our team is usual. You know, it's me and my wife, and she usually comes in on a Saturday, and we uh, and we we go um, hot and fast. We're not a low and slow cooker. We start our meat at five o'clock in the morning, 400 degrees for four hours, and turn it in is. Finger looking good. Man, all the big guys, you hunt fast too? Yeah, I was there. All right, okay. Um, you know, we had a discussion on the radio show last night, and since these guys are here, I'll throw it at you. We actually had a competitor come on and say that injecting your butts, injecting your brisket is a waste of time. How do you feel about that? I don't think so. I think that he, you know what? He doesn't need to inject his butts because as long as he's not injecting his butts, I'm going to beat him every time. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, I always inject. Uh, there's a lot of people out here that really don't know what they're doing. So, Right. <laughs> what are you going to do? Ladies and gentlemen, do not inject your butts <laughs> or your brisket. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Now, I'm not going to say who it is, but there's some people out here uh, that aren't necessarily competing that are injected with butter and half apple juice. Uh, butter. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think about injecting with butter? What are they injecting? Oh, uh, a boss of butt. I mean, it, whatever works. I mean, that's what's important. You cook what you're used to cooking. Just because I cook with a wag, I cook a wagyu, doesn't mean that's going to work for, for Bill. He might do well with a with a um, with a brisket from um, from Walmart. Walmart briskets. A lot of guys run Walmart briskets because they like to cook it. They're comfortable with it, and they've got you know a, a good feel about it. 
the, if, the, if the apple juice and the butter works with their rub and their speed and the rest of everything they're doing, then they could take a grand with that. I mean, that's a good... I've never heard of an apple bowl butter. Yeah, I thought that Sounds was like it'd be good in a brisket, <laughs> right. uh, We went to the Brewster's last night, and uh, the, the ice cream, and it was just so good. My sister swore up and down. She thought she mixed, they mixed the ice cream with butter. So you know, Paula Dean, butter's good with everything, isn't it? <laughs> Well, you know what? I might, you know, they got a good flavor down there. I might use it as an injection down there at um, at Brewster's, but I'm not going to tell you what flavor it is. I might use it in my injection. Okay. <laughs> okay. You use Wagyu briskets. Uh, uh, just for I know there's a lot of sponsors out there for pork, a lot of companies for pork. I mean, do you pretty much go to the market and look for one specific type of pork, or do you, uh, or do you uh, uh, have, you know, just whatever's there, or how do you do that? Well, for me. It makes sense to cook the same brand of meat week in and week out because then you understand it. If he's jumped from a Smithfield to an IBP and then over to something else that's a no name, they're all going to cook different. I basically I cook straight across the board. All my pork is IBP, IBP, and I cook Snake River Farm briskets, and I, and I do very well with that. Right? You need to be consistent with the with the grade of meat that you're using. Okay, IBP is owned by Tyson, isn't it? I don't know who it is. Okay. No. Uh, what, what about you? Are you pretty much IBP man too? I, I'm from Savannah. I just get whatever they have down at Sam's Club, to be honest with you. Okay. Sometimes they have IBP, sometimes they have Smithfield. I, I, I got some ribs there that are called Prairie Fresh. This is sweet. They look pretty good, but I don't know. Prairie Fresh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just at the mercy of Sam's Club down there in Savannah. Okay. You get 10% off, right, if you're a competitor. Uh, oh, do you? Oh, you didn't know? No. If you're a KCPS member, uh, you get 10% off. On all your money. Show your glove and show your Jeez. thing at the... Oh! Why did you tell me that two years ago? <laughs> you probably going to say... I could say it's about a thousand bucks. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we've done some work with Smithfield, and uh, I didn't know if you knew it, but Smithfield actually has a part number on all their company, on all their meat. And if you can get a butt, there's a little number down there. You go to Sam's, look for it, you can actually get, like, genetically the same. Meat uh, and, um, so I don't know if you're aware of that. I thought I'd uh, throw Smithfield well, you know what? That's, uh, that I learned something new every day. I don't use Smithfield though. No, you don't? Okay. You know, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. He'll use anything he can get. <laughs> you know where he's at? He's down in Savannah. Okay, they don't have much of nothing down there. <laughs> <laughs> they got prairie dogs down there, you know? They put the prairie dog and turn it in as a butt. <laughs> Oh Lord, we're down here with prairie dogs. I think that stuff I had in Greenland was prairie dogs. <laughs> oh. That was a... Them butts were only about that, that high, man. They were, they were thin. I, oh. bought, I brought them some 10-pound IVPs. Oh, wow. Like the real thing, you know. Okay. Came from, actually came from a pig. All right, so uh, Tyson Food, IVP. You got a man down here that's solid concrete with you. And he's a major competitor. Pit bulls up in smoke. All I can think about, I don't know why, is a lot of bull barbecue. I've seen it. He's got a heck of a van over it, he? He does. He, he, I, you know, we're going to have a wrap on our van as well, and uh, we're just waiting to, to get all of our sponsors online. We've got Moore's Marinade. It's one of the best marinades in, in the in the um, United States. I, I don't cook without any with anything else but Moore's Marinade. And we've got, uh, as far as charcoal goes, we've got uh, Royal Oak as a sponsor. And that's fantastic charcoal. We use the lump, um, but they make both kinds. It's six, seven, six fifty a bag for that big old wow. bag. 50, wow. I mean, you can't beat the price. That's cheap, yeah. And uh, so we've got a, and we got two other sponsors. So once we get all of our sponsors on board and everybody's locked in, we're gonna put a wrap on our trailer as well. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, up in New York City, Big Ed Mitchell, we got video of him. Uh, they sent Royal Oak, uh, just the regular charcoal, and he sent it back and said he wanted the natural. Uh, but Big Ed Mitchell, Royal Oak, I mean, that's pretty much all he uses. And uh, he burned it in a, in a tank and then he shoveled it over. So their natural is almost like burning wood. So Royal Oak's really good. Oh, it's a great product. And uh, is, is Royal Oak your favorite charcoal, too? I don't use charcoal. Oh, you don't? You use pellets. Wood. Oh, pellets. Barbecue is delight pellets. Oh, okay. And what brand cooker is he using? Uh, Coach Hack FEC 100. Okay. Okay, man, that's big news now. Chatham Artillery is using pellet cookers and winning big. How long have you been using them? All the time, you know, past, since the beginning of 2009. Okay. 
It's that the kind that uh, you hook electric to it, and every every few minutes it'll put some more right behind it. Yeah, it's got a basically got an auger that feeds the pellets in there, and a, and a fan, uh, force there. You know. Okay. Well, let me ask you. Uh, I'm sure everybody wants to know before we go now. How did you get barbecue, or how long how long ago did you get into it? Uh, my brother-in-law got me started in this uh, Lee Sweat. He's with uh, he's the he actually started the Chad Martillery barbecue team, oh, probably about 2004. And we got real serious about it in 2006. And, uh, somehow or another, I took over the team. Uh, he got busy with work and this and that and the other thing. There you go. So we also have a book that we sell, Competition Barbecue Secrets. And he went too into the book sales and internet sales and internet marketing and all that like I was, so I sort of took that over too and sort of bought them out. Well, what's your website address? Uh, bbq-book.com and uh, we also have a set of uh, instruction videos at barbecuecoach.com, B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E, coach.com. Man, uh, Chatham Artillery wins a lot of their competitions, friends, if he's got a book out, but do you kind of discuss meat prep, or what, what's the basic thing that the book is about? Yeah, it's all in there uh, in the book. Uh, the book is about mostly low and slow. Uh, uh, and on the videos, we have uh, hot and fast, and we also have the low and slow videos, all kinds of other videos like turkey and sausage, and fire control, and that kind of stuff. Wow, man. Whole hog. Whole hog? Whole hog. Whole hog. He said whole hog. I love whole hog. Hey, uh, man, that's big time. Uh, man, I have to go over there and check that out. I'm going to get me a book this weekend. I, I didn't know that was out there. And, uh, how about you, man? Have you got a website or anything for your stuff? Pitbullsupinsmoke.com. Okay. Well, look, get online with Danny Kugel and uh, what's your name? Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson. I'm sorry I didn't know your name. But all I know is Chatham Artillery. Yeah. Uh, and uh, get on there and support these guys. Uh, how many competitions is Chatham going to do this year? I'm not one of those teams that, that do 30 or 40 a year, probably 10 to 12. Okay. How about you? I'm closer to 30. 30? Okay. Yeah, pit bulls, I mean, pit bulls up in smoke, you guys are ranked in KCBS and everything, aren't you? Yes, we are. And yeah, we're like uh, first or second in the state of Georgia, 80th in the world in KCBS right now. Yeah. Uh, pit bulls up in smoke is a major competitor, just like uh, Bubba Q and, and the Pellet Envy and all them. And, uh, but uh, Chatham Artillery pulls on, the fear of God gets in everybody. So. Well, I'll tell you the difference between Chatham Artillery and the guys that do 50 events. Chatham Artillery, Bill will go out there and he'll do 10 events and he'll take the grand in half. Yeah. Okay? He doesn't need to do 50 events to get five grands. He'll do 10 <laughs> events and get five grand. <laughs> and that's what's kind of unfair with the scoring system and the way they weigh this thing out. Because if, you, if you've got a 50% win ratio, it should be a 50% win ratio whether you're doing 50 events and winning five grand or 10 events and winning five grand. Yeah, you know, uh, what about your Jack Daniels draws? I mean, do you think you won't do enough to get it? Or? Uh, I went to the Jack in 2009. Uh, had like four entries last year. Did not get selected. Most of the best teams in the southeast uh, didn't get selected last year. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it was real crazy. But uh, I don't have any this year. Oh, you don't? Not yet. Okay. I've only done about four contests so far. That's the way it started out last year, too. I, I didn't win my first three or four, and then I started winning every one. <laughs> you got you got to cook, don't you? It's like you got to cook every weekend for a little while and get yourself together and then go out there and win. Yeah. Well, maybe for us, maybe not for you. Though. You get a little rusty over the the winter and it just takes some time to work things out and if you're experimenting you, you know that's my problem I, I, I always experiment at the beginning of the year and then I, then I go back to what what's tried and true and start winning again yeah mm -hmm. uh, when I was at Dillard you took first place at brisket yeah yeah brisket's like your real strong category it, it used to be <laughs> I don't know what it ain't this year. I'm, I'm the chicken man this year. Oh, are you? I got two first place chickens already and several top, top three or fours. That's the same thing Bubba said last week in Greenwood that, you know, he was number one in the country brisket last year. 
Uh, there's so many new faces. Everybody's getting involved and just it's, it's changing things a little bit, isn't it? Well, it's like I got my barbecuecoach.com site and uh, everybody's taking these classes. Everybody's got class. Bubba, Bubba's got classes. Uh, Swamp Boys has classes. Jack's old style there. A lot of bulls got classes. Everybody's got classes. So everybody's really learning how to how to do this really well. Yeah. The thing is that it's all, getting all more competitive every yeah. year. All the all the pros take each other's classes too. Like I'll take Bubba's class. Bubba will take my class. Someone will take his class. A lot of bull will take someone's class. We'll all take uh, Myron's class. Myron will take someone's. Class. You know, we're always looking at what everybody's doing. We're trying to not change what we're doing, but improve on what we're doing by learning what somebody else is doing. And, you know, and a lot of science is coming into this thing as well, too. It's not just old timey, throw the wood on the fire and throw the meat on it. It's, we're, we're, we're applying science to the, to, the, uh, to the sport. Yeah, you know, they've got culinary people, got this big three year culinary degree, and come out and take last place. I tell you, them <laughs> country boys, man, y'all getting to where, and we're talking about 11, 15, and 20 step. Uh, Things to getting a piece of meat ready. Yeah, isn't that true? Yeah, yeah. They, they, uh, they, I don't know. It's not about uh, you know restaurant quality food is, is nowhere near as good as this, this barbecue that we're cooking out here this weekend. So. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of people make the mistake of cooking what they like to eat, and it's, it's, these competitions are really not about that. I mean, it's about cooking what the judges like. Yeah. And uh, we're talking about guys putting 15 layers of stuff on it. Lots of lots of flavor profiles and a lot of work. Yeah. Well, man, I, I tell you, I've never had a lot of bull and, and pit bulls up and smoke on my website. I got another big name. It's been quite an honor to stand out here with you hard working fellas. And, uh, you know, I want to end it off with just, just a few words about how much work it is. I mean, you got to pull all this equipment out. you got to get everything set up. you got to pretty much stay up all night. And then the next day, you got to be in tune enough mentally to make all these boxes and turn them in. And, and talk about the maybe the last five hours of the competition before turn in. <laughs> I don't want to think well, about it. <laughs> it starts at 12 o'clock. It goes through to what 1:30, and you're basically getting it done, cleaning up, getting another meat out, cleaning up, getting another meat out, cleaning up. You're cooking four meats. You're cooking all four of them at the same time. They're all getting turned in a half an hour between each time. I mean, it's not, it's not, a, it's not fun, and it's, it's a lot of hard work. But when it's done, you sit back, and then, then it's in the hands of the gods. So any shortcuts you took, or, or if you were lazy, or if you made a mistake and said, you know what, the heck with this, I'm gonna just do it this way, because it's a lot easier, you're gonna pay for it in the end. That's not the time to be, the last four hours is the time to, to, to lay down the job. How about you now, the last four hours, I mean, you're tired, you've been pushed, I mean, what's it like? For me, uh, the, comp the actual competition is almost the easy part. Uh, most people don't realize that this is like a five-day event. I mean, you got, it takes me two days to prepare for a contest, and then you about a day to drive to it, and once you get here and set up, and, you know, and, that's the easy, easy part, the fun part. And then you gotta start packing stuff up. You gotta drive back home. When you get back home, you gotta unpack everything. You gotta clean your grill. Uh, and then turn around and start getting ready for the next one. It's about a five day event. Right. Most people don't realize that. It is a sport. You know, KCBS is top. You know, I was on the radio last night. I looked up how many KCBS fans there are this weekend. It was 15. <laughs> you know, what can you say, man? They're number one in the country, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Eddie. Yeah, K KCBS is like NASCAR, and then you got you know, get the Bush League, like uh, FBAs and GBAs and whatnot. But uh, definitely, that's the uh, the big boys play in the uh, KCBS. Well, let me pose the major question. What do you think about the NBA? Uh, what's that? Oh, you don't know? Yep. No. I'm just joking. Oh. I think it's a good thing. I, I mean, I, I don't compete in any Whatever makes you happy. Yeah, what about you? What do you think about the NBA? Uh, they used to be a lot bigger than they, they are now, but back before they had that big breakup with uh, Memphis and Bay. But it's, I've never done an NBN event, so but, uh, they look like fun. I, I, 
I'd rather, you know, I do a lot of FBA contests, so, uh, okay. well, I did last year. I don't, I'm not doing any this year because I'm trying to go for the team of the year in KCBS. I don't think I stand a chance. But <laughs> doing Just doing 10 to 12 contests, these other guys doing 30 or 40, I don't know. Right. But, it, you know, last year I only did eight KCBS con contests. I didn't, didn't even stand a chance at the team of the year, so. Man, you know you were still listed. That's wild. Now you really did good in that contest, you know. <laughs> You're listed too. You're way up there. So, man, uh, that's amazing. Uh, you kind of remind me a little bit of Mike from Q out. I mean, you look like him a little bit. Might be something about the way y'all look and make good. I don't know. I met, I met him last weekend for the first time. Oh, did Greenwood. Okay. Yeah, he was down there. All right. Well, this is Darren from Barbecue Superstar. Thanks a lot, fella. Pleasure to see you. Pleasure to meet you finally. Mm -hmm. We wish you a lot of luck this weekend. It's Daryl from Barbecue Superstars. Thanks for stopping by.